a lot of people have been asking me to do this for a long time and I've been kind of weird about it and a little reluctant, but today's the day I'm taking you guys inside of my apartment. So yesterday I showed you guys uh, some of my hallway here in the dining room. Today we are going into my main living room. There's a lot going on in here. This room is actually huge. So there's a lot of space on the walls that I'm not proud of. Hopefully one day they'll all be full. Of course, my mom always said books make a room. I have a lot of books. Like that. This is actually disgusting. This is a cat's heart. Uh, my friends, Justin James, brought it back from a house uh, the doctor had dissected uh, their household cat, which is pretty gnarly, but also very kind of cool. This I got at um, the New York Arts Book Fair. It's an artist who does like these uh, pieces about alcoholic authors. I just thought this one was so cool. And of course, Hiroshima Monomore is one of my favorite books. Doll head stuff left over from my old house. And of course this epic lamp, which I picked up for like, I think it was like $25 or something crazy. This is something that I've meant to put in my booth for a long time, which is honestly, have been kind of lazy about. And my Ram's head, which is definitely mine forever. I love that thing. This is a piece I got for myself. Hmm, let's see, there you go. This is a piece I got for myself at uh, Antique Marketplace of Lemoyne a couple years ago. It's kind of hard to tell how vivid it is, but in real life, it's super rich. I found this at Adamstown Antique Mall. It's got some damage. It's super heavy, but I just thought it was so neat. I only paid like, I think it was like $90 or $80. Uh, and I did carry that up by this up the stairs by myself, which was something I'm not looking forward to doing again. Here's another cool one. This is my shoe shining kit. Um, I had to have it. I actually saw it at an auction and I bid on it and I went pretty high and I guess the person who bought it never picked it up. So it went back for auction and I ended up getting it for like nothing. I think it was like 50 bucks more religious this I definitely dug out of a trash can <laughs> in uh, Alexandria Virginia I was really excited about it at the time because I was looking for a new side table um, unfortunately this thing probably weighs 200 pounds maybe three so it kind of just lives there now um, this is my weird makeshift <laughs> air conditioning situation because my apartment's way too big to not have central air. I found this guy at a yard sale in Baltimore. I was so excited. I'd been looking for one for like 10 years. And of course, my hairdryer chair, I carried all the way home in my car by myself from Richmond. Everyone from the thrift stop, thrift, thrift shop, I got it at. Uh, it was like 50 bucks or something. They all came outside and they were like, there's no way that's fitting in your car. And I was like, oh, I am determined. It reclines. It's actually like one of the most comfortable things I own. And I don't keep a lot of stuff, but uh, I did buy this original rubber-faced ideal bear for myself. Um, a lot of the Rushtons and stuff like that, I can't really justify keeping because there's you know, worth so much money, but I actually paid an insane amount for this guy. He is new old stock. He came out of an old shop that closed and I just, I mean, how can you not be happy looking at that? A couple weird dolls. This one's definitely one of the weirdest. I'm not sure what's going on with her. She, she's had such a weird, uh, everything. I had to have it. This is, well, my coffee and some tape, pretty normal things. 
This I found in a trash can. It's Italian, it's a decanter, it's a music box. I don't wanna mess with it too much because I feel like I might break it. I'm on a bad run of breaking things right now. But I found it in the trash when I first moved up here and they sell for about 250 bucks. Um, for some reason, I just can't part with it. I'm pretty attached. This lamp's pretty cool. I did break, uh, speaking of breaking things, I broke one of the globes on it, unfortunately, and it does need to be rewired. But it's just a table for now. And of course my footstool, very important. We gotta love the footstool. I paid $10 for that at Bedford Street. A lot of people have tried to get me to sell it, but I think that one's a keeper. Another weird uh, doll situation and another lamp that needs rewiring. <laughs> oh my gosh, how did I breeze these guys over? I think I showed these before actually back in uh, March, but I love a good weird rabbit. This one's probably my favorite just because the size is so unusual. And then this one was a... Um, oh gosh, I'm having a brain fart. This one was a store display for the candy containers in an old general store. It's paper mache. So epic. Church sign. This is one of my favorites too, but somehow it seems to have gotten knocked in the frame. I'll have to get that looked at. This is probably one of my favorite lamps. It does need rewiring. Um, there's just really happy memories with this non-working lamp and then some more these two were my mom's and then this dolly I bought for myself I got a pretty good deal on it I got it at an auction and then um, this is something I bought for myself too water stained Jesus and a giant elf lamp it's just kind of spectacular. Toy Soldiers TV that it's not even plugged in. <laughs> it's a antique dermatitis medication. I think that's so funny. Dermazerma. I do collect a lot of art books. This is not actually a real Bible. This is uh, something I got from one of the New York or LA art book fairs from an artist who does altered books. A lot of the things uh, that look like something normal in my book collection, open them up and they are just not. This one I also bought for myself and I did pay to ship it. I bought it in an au online auction. I just could not resist this painting. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I accidentally dinged it a little bit when I moved, but She's in pretty good condition for her age. Marbo sign and a little <laughs> weird kitty corner erotic shop sign. So this Marilyn is pretty special. When I bought my house in Rockville outside DC, I had this eight foot fiberglass Marilyn Monroe and uh, she was outside my house and I just It just brought joy to people and it brought anger to other people who didn't like an eight foot fiberglass Marilyn Monroe because they had something stuck up their butt, but whatever. Anyway, when I moved here, uh, one of the first things I did was I went on Marketplace and I followed the search the giant life-size Marilyn Monroe. It only took a few months and I found her and she's even better than the last. I love her teeth, it's so wild. And she technically does have a fan that plugs into there and then it blows her skirt up, but it's incredibly heavy and I have yet to put it together. This is another one of my favorite pieces. This one belonged to my mom. It's a uh, Renoir's wife, a portrait. This guy's pretty crazy. Hold on, let me uh, rearrange this for a second. Yeah, so he does that. <laughs> he did uh, break his fingers off, but I can always repair it and give him his drum back. He is German and he's very scary. I love uh, religious items. This came from an old funeral parlor. Anything that lights up, I'm a sucker for. If it moves, if it lights up, if it's got glass eyes. Um, it's 
it's in pretty good condition. And then I got my, I used to have a bunch of mannequins, but I sold a lot of them and I really only kept the child size ones. And then I found this uh, little vintage ballerina dress outfit at a antique shop in Hagerstown. And of course that's my rubber face Sansa and my sad damaged Humpty. In case you're wondering what this is, it is Santa Claus and you can see him from, of course, the main road. He waves at people year round. And this is my favorite hat. Got some random doll situations happening here. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do with those. All right, well, it's probably time to see my favorite thing ever. I'm gonna skip a few steps and just go to it because it's gonna be hard not to ignore it in a second. That is hopefully not offending anyone too bad. It's very old. No, I did not kill a tiger. No, I do not know anybody who killed a tiger. It's a eight foot taxidermy tiger and it was a gift. It's probably the best gift uh, anyone can give. It's got a little damage on its foot, but it's, uh, it needs no explanation. Of course, I love this old sign. I think it's so funny it's spelled wrong. All right, well, can't dance around this guy much longer either. He's pretty noisy. He came out of a museum in Gettysburg. So he moves. This is probably one of the coolest parts, uh, seeing his wire guts here. Then, the zebra. Now, the zebra is pretty rough. Uh, I bought a couple of them from an online auction. I sold the one that was in good condition and I kept this one. So I made my money and I got a free damaged zebra out of it. This table was made for me from a friend. A friend made it for me. I'm not sure what I'm saying right now. Another child mannequin. Pretty cool. Got a little bit of a lamp fetish going on here. This one's uh, probably one of my favorites though. At nighttime, this looks insanely cool. Pinball table. This is cool, pretty cool. It's a cigarette dispenser. There's no cigarettes in it, so I can't really show you how it works, but um, a cigarette pops out of the skull's mouth. And of course my favorite vintage table lighter I found. It's like five bucks or something. This couch does vibrate. I know, that's so crazy. It's from the 60s. Weird. But it's in pretty good condition and you're probably never gonna see one again. <laughs> At least not that clean, so I kept it. This is one of my favorite tables. I got it from a girl who restores furniture out in uh, the Philly area. And then this is my bad luck Elvis lamp. This is the third version of the Elvis lamp. I'd always wanted one of these. Uh, the first one I got, I bought in the mail on eBay. It arrived broken. The second one, movers broke. And then this is Elvis 3.0. This is by far the best Elvis. He came from a house that was obsessed with Elvis and they had a dog named Elvis and the dog died and they had weird paintings of Elvis the dog and Elvis together and they couldn't look at it anymore because just upset them and reminded them of their dog Elvis. Very strange story, I love it. Uh, this is my <laughs> DIY poorly made slack glass lampshade. It was in pieces and it was a hanging lamp and I just took some glue to it, I mean, this is probably gonna disturb anybody who sees it who's a glass person, because it's a, actually an incredible lampshade. But I paid 20 bucks for it, and I didn't feel like investing in getting it completely professionally done. And of course, my favorite sofa. I don't know why I have three sofas. I never even sit on any of them, honestly. I just sit in my bedroom or in my office or at the kitchen table. This is probably one of my favorite things I own. I know it's weird that it's under my sofa, but I just don't know what to do with it. 
I feel like we kind of breezed past Medusa here. There's a lot of stuff I have, obviously. I kind of downplay it like I don't have that much stuff because I used to have a four bedroom house that was pretty much packed full of stuff. Um, but this painting I bought when I moved out here, I saw it, I could not resist. It's so weird. <laughs> I paid like $90 for it or something. I'm not like married to it. I just had to rescue it. All right, well, I actually think I'm gonna take a break from showing you guys around and pick this up on another day. Oh, this etching, that's so pretty. All right, well, that's the main living room and I'll come back another day and show you guys the rest.